everyone. Welcome to my program, Elderhood, Aging Gracefully. I'm Larry Grimm. I'm a personal coach that specializes in people going into and moving through elderhood so that they can make their elder years wonderful and real. I uh, extend to you a gentle welcome of Aloha Spirit. We, um, we in Hawaii love to share the love of Aloha, and uh, it's a, there for everybody, and I extend it to you around the world here today. Uh, William Butler Yeats once said, there are no strangers here, only friends we, ha we haven't yet met. And that's the way I consider you, friends, online friends that I haven't yet met and look forward to. I am so grateful to Think Tech Hawaii for their partnership because they have offered this opportunity for me to use this show as an opportunity to share with you the foundational thinking, insights, and uh, ha about the spiritual tasks of elderhood. You had a childhood, you had a, an adult life, you, excuse me, you had a childhood, you had an adolescence, you had an adulthood, and it's time for elderhood. And thinking about this stage of life as being a stage gives us some new insight into what the tasks are that we need to take on. Now these tasks just emerge and we find ourselves doing them or not doing them. But my belief is that if we do them intentionally, respond with resources, respond with genuine experience of uh, wrestling sometimes with them, that it will indeed make our elderhood an experience that is real and wonderful. The seven, the six spiritual, the five spiritual tasks that I use and that I identify are the five tasks of grieving, sorting out, forgiving, and letting go. These are all major tasks that we, and each, and I'm structuring my program around those tasks. And today we are most fortunate to have Crystal Bettenhausen to be a part of this show with her experience in grief recovery as a grief recovery specialist. Uh, Crystal works is one of my uh, cohorts, my uh, colleagues at Bristol Hospice Hawaii. And Crystal, I am so grateful you're here. Thank you so much for being a part of this broadcast. Thank you so much, Larry, for having like, me. Would you introduce yourself a little bit? And share with us what you do at Bristol Hospice Hawaii. Certainly, certainly. Well, first off, aloha. Thank aloha. you for having me. This is such a fantastic experience. Um, so I am um, a gerontological social worker. Um, my background is really working with older adults. Um, and at Bristol Hospice, I am one of the bereavement coordinators. And you're, but you are specializing and interested in grief recovery. Absolutely. How has that come a part of your life? Um, well, I have been a grief recovery specialist since 2013 and um, had the amazing opportunity to be trained by the founders. Um, I was trained by um, Russell Friedman, who is the co-author of the book, The Grief Recovery Method, and um, was able to really study under him um, as a mentor um, in healing from grief, um, something that we oftentimes don't put together. Um, we don't put grief and recovery in the same sentence. I, that is so insightful. And I have many people on um, Facebook who say, does this grief ever end? Is there a way to end this grief? So I'm really looking forward to talking some more with you today about that. Um, it seems to me that when we get into elderhood, we find ourselves grieving. I have one person say, you know, aging is just a series, accumulating a series of losses. And um, it struck me that, of course, grief is not just a, a nice decline, you peak and then decline. Grief has a lot of variance within a year experience. Mm -hmm. Would you pull up that, uh, that circle of grief, Rob? I suggest that grief is like this. It's the big, the, in the center point is denial. Of course, we like to deny that we have any problems. But once we move through the denial, we have a range of emotions, as you can see in this circle of grief. I won't, uh, <clears throat> I won't uh, mention all of them, but anxiety, anger, rage, jealousy, all these seem to emerge in the grief experience. And the first thing that I always do as a counselor 
or as a coach is say, what grief are you still moving through? And what is it that you're dealing with? What loss are you dealing with? And that's the beginning point for, for um, a sense of freedom and release. What do you think about that? Um, I think it's so important to put grief into an individual feeling. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that, that display that you showed, um, the graphic that you just had up, is um, pretty much sums up everybody that I've ever talked to within grief, you know, all of those emotions. So it really is um, really an interesting, interesting graphic okay. um, because it, grief is so emotional. You talked about um, how it seems to increase later in life. Um, part of um, the study of gerontology really is looking at birth to the end of life. But when we really look at grief timelines, um, we go into an even further um, in-depth conversation of how we handle grief and how that grief impacts us, but then how we handle that next loss. Um, and then it goes into even relationships. So it is so individual um, and is defined so differently by so many different people. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it, it is a, a fantastic conversation starter mm -hmm. in what, what is grief and where are you in grief and what are you grieving? When I found that graphic, I said, oh my gosh, this looks like standing in front of a, standing in front of one of those dryers at the laundromat, you know, and you put your clothes in the dryer and you look in the window and it's just this huge tumbling, 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 tumbling. And that was what it experiences, the experience is like. Yeah. It's just a huge onslaught of a variety of emotions. Absolutely. That's a great, I like that visual. I, I looked at it and I saw gray matter. I saw a brain. <laughs> gray matter. <laughs> I saw yeah. a different, you know, Excellent. just, um, yeah, just different emotions and where those emotions are at. Yeah. They really are a range of them. What are some of the triggers for grief? You know, I, I define, I mean, I look at grief as, as the actual feeling. You know, that is the feeling, that is the emotion. So I think triggers for grief are, are losses. So, and what is a loss? You know, again, that's very individual. Um, we look at loss of confidence, loss of trust. Um, now, those are not solid, tangible things. Those are concepts. Absolutely, so absolutely. Experiences. Um, and then we can look at losses into, you know, divorces, <clears throat> loss of a pet, um, loss of a job. Wonderful. There's this rainbow bridge. That, uh, yes. Something about people who lose their pets and go to grief support groups, yeah. uh, Rainbow, Rainbow Bridge. Yes. Yeah. Um, and actually, the Grief Recovery um, Institute has their own text on pet oh, loss. They? And we have our own program that we offer as well oh, through excellent. the grief recovery method. Um, so the thing about losing a pet is oftentimes, you know, we lose people and we lose, like you said, you know, kind of the, the confidence and the... Um, Trust, you know, those are a little bit different, but um, pets are even more tricky um, because they're, they give such unconditional yeah, love. Right, you know, oftentimes, yeah. you know, you have, you maybe have lost, you know, a spouse or a partner, yeah. you know, a parent. And, you know, again, we never compare grief. Yeah. Um, but you always have dynamic relationships with those people where pets, you know, it's hard to say a bad thing about a pet, right? Um, <laughs> and they just give such amazing sure. unconditional love. Yeah. So um, I love that meme which on uh, Facebook, may I be the person my dog already thinks I am. Oh, yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. Pets are amazing. They are um, amazing. But, you know, we, and again, we don't compare. We don't compare grief. So, you know, how somebody handles the loss of a dog to mm -hmm. how somebody handles the loss of, of a mother or a spouse is, you know, so unique to that individual that we mm. can never really compare it. Um, and we have to approach it with, with the same heart yeah. that we approach all of our grievers. What has been your observation, though, in terms of, for instance, <clears throat> in our society, um, work is so important, such an identity thing, my work. Mm -hmm. Do you see a difference between the way men in general and women in general uh, experience the loss of their location? I think that that is one of the hardest things for people as they enter into retirement. Um, and I think there is a difference between how men and how women um, 
approach that. You know, a lot of um, maybe our, our retirees right now, you know, our 65 and older group, a lot of women didn't have professions that are entering into retirement yeah. their entire life. You know, maybe they stayed at home with their children. They yeah. were the homemaker. That was very common. You know, now we're moving into a different era um, where women are working their entire adulthood lives. Um, so it's interesting to see um, that grief that goes on yeah. when somebody retires. Yeah. Um, and then a lot of times people are coming out of retirement to go work again because it was just not, it wasn't the right fit. Retirement wasn't what they thought it was going to be. Me. Uh, so <laughs> I'm sure a lot of viewers in our audience um, have I'm experienced that. I'm sure a lot of you that. have done yeah. that too. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's yeah. very much a, uh, a wonderful yes. experience. I, I, when I retired, I was uh, as a Presbyterian minister in my in my um, service to congregations. I said to my group, I said, "Yeah, I believe in retirement. Retire, <clears throat> retire young, and retire often." <laughs> so I think it gives a chance to a new look on life and new experience. What um, what about this identity issue? Who do you see people at at this elder age dealing with issues around identity? And grief involved in that? Um, absolutely. I think, you know, as people approach um, a different stage of life, they often are questioning their own mortality. You know, they're questioning their past relationships um, and some of the losses maybe that they've had with adult children or ex-spouses or colleagues, just all kinds of uh -huh. different emotions that kind of come out when you're evaluating growing older, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think people do go through and, um, you know, we're meaning-making machines as human beings. Say that again. Meaning-making machines. That's lovely. You know, we're constantly trying to, to make meaning out of everything. Yes. Um, and it's hard, it's hard not to go through and kind of evaluate, you know, what, um, I think the word um, reconciliation comes up a lot. Which one? Reconciliation. Reconciliation. You know? um, excuse my accent. Thank you. <laughs> and, um, you know, and I think just, again, trying to, you know, what legacy am I leaving? Uh -huh. And in that, there's a lot of identity that comes uh -huh. out in yes. um, what, you know, what am I leaving behind? Yes. Um, and I think there's also, um, I see this a lot in older adult men. Um, well, my father left this legacy. What am I going to leave? Oh, which is really um, can be a lot of pressure for a lot of people as they get a little bit older. Sometimes you'll see people just start with new hobbies, or you know, at sixty, I'm going to start training for a marathon because I need to, I need to have something, you know, um, some meaning, so, <clears throat> which is great. It just shows that we're, you know, living longer, healthier, intentful lives. I yes. think. Yes, yes, definitely yeah. so. So there's, there's <clears throat> grief after a loss, and part of what I'm hearing you ta uh, say is that there's some, an some anticipatory or some anticipation of loss mm -hmm. as we reach into elder years. Now, I'm, we, we said 65 and older is somewhat of a, somewhat of a marker, but um, uh, I like to think that we enter into elderhood when we start doing these things. We find ourselves losing much more, and we find ourselves dealing with the sadness that we suddenly have, and how do we deal with that, and, and is there anybody I can talk this over with, I mm -hmm. think is one of the questions that may come up. But you're, you're mentioning that, and perhaps one of the hidden griefs is that we anticipate, we grieve in anticipation of something happening, uh, some loss. Mm -hmm. Say a little bit more about this anticipatory grief. Where do you see it? What does it look like? Um, you like? I think it's. I think it can be. You know, I oftentimes compare. I don't compare grief, <laughs> but okay, okay, um, okay. You know, looking at. Um, you know, grief can be something really positive to some people. Oh. Um, and they've made it into something positive. You know, because they're not afraid of it. They're not afraid of that. That sadness. Um, they've made into more of a, a positive memory, and that's what they have defined as ah. their grief. Um, but I think unresolved grief can often be kind of an ugly beast. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you don't ever know when it's going to be coming up. And um, what I tell families all the time is, just so you know, this current loss 
might ignite grief from a previous yeah. loss. We're going to take a minute break here, and then when we come back, I'd like to talk about recovery. Yeah, absolutely. That'd be great. Thank you. Thanks, Crystal. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, inviting you to join us on Wednesdays at 1 o'clock for Cannabis Chronicle, the 10,000-year odyssey, where we take a look at cannabis as food, cannabis as medicine, cannabis and religion, and cannabis and dear old Uncle Sam. So please join us to learn all about cannabis. Again, Wednesdays at 1 o'clock. え、ティンクテックハワイが日本語でお送りしています。こんにちは、ハワイ。ホストのくにせゆかりです。え、毎週各週月曜日、え、2時からですね、日本語で日本語で活躍されていらっしゃるハワイのいろいろな方をお招き
grief oh, or helping okay. children um, work through grief. So Good. that's really kind of training Good. adults how to be a little bit um, more aware of what children go through when they're grieving. So, so good, because it is a difficult, difficult, we, we project onto our kids what we think they're doing it and how they're processing. Mm -hmm. and, and they don't always think in terms of adult concepts and adult phrases. And that would be Absolutely. excellent. Well, in my personal coaching, I do the one-on-one -on -one work with people mm -hmm. as they're going through grief, but I can also refer to these wonderful resources yeah, that you presented here. Absolutely. We'll do that in my personal coaching for life and faith. Absolutely, that would be wonderful. And what's great about the Grief Recovery Institute is they are worldwide. So we have um, you know, grief recovery specialists in Vancouver, we have them in England, we have them in Australia, and those programs are really strong. So um, really, wherever you go in the world, you can you know, type in yeah. your location, and it'll pop up with the grief recovery specialists in that area, and you can contact yeah. them. I have another image I work with about grief, um, and it's, I call it the Mount St. Helens factor. Ah, Because I'm Mount St. Helens, yeah, as you know, when Mount St. Helens was building up its magnum, uh, it built up a dome in the center. This is a few years ago, folks, you may not be... You probably can remember this. I built up a dome at the top, and we were watching the dome. And as the dome built up, it tricked us. It blew out to the side. Mount St. Helens ah. blew out to the side, and that's uh, where it erupted. So I think sometimes people, we experience this pressure build up of the grief and the loss at the top, and, but it shoots off to the side. And who does it hit? Anyone who's close. Anyone who's close. <laughs> and I will say, I remember I was a child when Mount St. Helens um, erupted. I oh, was yeah. living in North Dakota, and we had ash on our cars that morning. Of course, morning, of course. You know, because yeah, it just kind of straight, you know. <laughs> but, the, but this power, I mean, this <coughs> strength of emotion uh, almost takes over the person and strikes out. And they end, we end up striking out at people that we love. And we say, if we think about it, we wonder, why would I do that? Why did I do that? But this not not having dealt with or moved towards recovery for the initial pressure, uh, we are likely to, to I think, are likely to strike out in other ways. Um, Bristol Hospice, they didn't do, you know, they didn't get their medicine here in time, or the facility is so bad, and the, of course the food is always terrible. <laughs> Absolutely, we look for the nearest person or thing to blame when we <clears throat> are when we're in that anger. Um, and it, it's so common. It's yeah. so common, um, which is why it's so helpful to have trained professionals in end of life that know how to really work with these family members and give grace to the family members that, you know, this isn't personal. This is, this is grief. Yeah. Um, and we, we need yeah. to remind our, our colleagues of that all the time, you know. So some of the triggers that we're talking about are uh, loss of job, loss of family, friends, loss of uh, identity, loss of confidence, loss of um, purposefulness, um, loss, of course, loss of family members. These, these all can create grief, and each of us experiences it differently. And so it, one of the triggers is to, or one of the helpful things is to be aware of these possibilities when you're going through this, that you're going to experience grief, that tumultuous wheel of grief, and you to watch also of ways that you may strike out at somebody else. And if you're striking out at someone else, it may be an indication that uh, in a baseless kind of way that you're, you're really experiencing sorrow and sadness at a deep level. Mm -hmm. Well, Thank and being you. aware of, you know, any kind of substance use, you know. Um, any, Say some uh, more about you that. You know, all of a sudden, you know, that one glass of wine is turning into a couple glasses of wine, you know, increase in, um, you know, any kind of, um, any kind of substances, really, you know, whether it be, you know, a lot of people will go through grief and challenging times in life and, and start smoking. Um, you know, of course, we see increase in drug use and, and alcohol use, um, and those are not healthy. Yeah, um, yeah. But we also see a lot of people that go right back to work and get um, buried into work projects and feel like they're coping okay because they're at work and they're functioning. But again, that doesn't necessarily mean that they are at that state of well-being. Um, yeah. They're just coping in a different way. 
Um, so there's avoidance and there's somewhat avoidance and somewhat uh, self-medicating yeah. that you're talking about. Of course. And in between that is achieving well-being, often with the help of others mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who can intervene, bring interventions that are meaningful into your life. This is so helpful, and I hope everybody who um, knows about International Day of Grieving Awareness is, <laughs> is watching and enjoying this and finding some help in these very practical ways of, uh, of addressing the powerful, powerful uh, emotion in our lives. Again, um, when I go into a, a relationship that's a helping relationship, mm -hmm. one of the first things I ask, and this is even with Bristol Hospice Hawaii, is, a chaplain is to ask, what's going on with, what grief do you bring into this situation? Mm -hmm. And as you mentioned, when you go through the grief of, of a, this new loss, is it bringing up the grief before that's yeah. maybe still lingering and not resolved? Mm -hmm. um, sometimes, let's see, I can remember losing my um, St. Bernard of our family, you know, when I was in high school. And it's just like yesterday, and it does feel imminent. Mm -hmm. It does feel like it's right now, mm -hmm. <laughs> if, I, if I dwell with it. So those things do linger on, and they Absolutely. do hang on. Absolutely. And uh, it's good to take care of ourselves. It is. It is. So there are 250,000 residents of Hawaii over 65 years of age. Wow. That's about a quarter of our state population, which puts us in seventh rank in the states, I think it's seventh, in the number of elder population. Again, I think it's important to think of this as elderhood, a time in our life where we're meeting the kinds of tasks, spiritual tasks that come up and that are challenging us. And I thank Think Tech Hawaii for giving me this opportunity to, over the next, year, next weeks uh, and months, so I'm, hopeful, I'm hopeful, to bring in experts in various stages of these these five, uh, these five um, spiritual tasks. We've dealt with grieving. It won't be the last time we talk about grieving. We will look at uh, storytelling, uh, sorting out our stories. We'll look at preparing. We'll look at forgiving. We'll look at letting go. And those mm -hmm. five spiritual tasks, there may be others, but those are the ones I've identified. And I welcome you back when you come again to be a part of this program and the show. If you want to send me any message, Larry G at live-connections.com. I will welcome having a communication from you. Thanks again. Think Tech Hawaii. Thank you, Crystal. Really you. appreciate your help. Thank you.